What if you could restore any image, or upscale an image, with massive detail? Today I'm going to show you how to take a small image and turn it into a big image. Oh, what do you call a cold puppy? A chili dog. Hey, uh... So first, let me show you how to get this installed. If you're new to Comfib, this is what you're gonna see once you get it running. You're gonna find my workflow file, you're gonna drag and drop it into here. It's gonna set error, most likely you're missing custom nodes. You have a lot of red nodes, and with loading graph, the following node types were not found. So, completely normal, don't worry about it. This is the workflow that we're gonna use, and now we're just gonna go into the manager down here. If you don't have the manager, check my tutorial on how to uh, install Comfy UI properly. We're going to into the manager, install missing custom nodes. There are gonna be probably more than one here. This is the only one that I need right now. So I'm just gonna press install. If you need more, just select them from the little checkbox here, here and press install. Once that's finished, you're gonna get this restart button here. So we're just gonna press restart. We're gonna press okay up here. And now your Comfy UI is restarting. It says reconnecting here, just wait a minute or two. If you wanna see what's going on, you can check your uh, terminal tab. So now it has restarted, they're still red. So what do you do? Well, you can just refresh the page either by clicking on your refresh button or control or command R. Now, if you don't have a local installation, you can use Think Diffusion, just launch your app, say Comfy, click launch here, launch again. And once that's finished, you can just drop the workflow in to Think Diffusion which is a great cloud solution if you don't have a machine that is up for the task. So now we have no more red nodes and this is the workflow that uh, we're gonna be using today. Now this is not one of those super big, super mega advanced workflows that you need to spend hours and hours and hours to learn. I took the official workflow or the sample workflow provided by the Superior Dev Devs and I just added some weeks to it. Um, the way I did it is I want to make it as simple to use as possible. So that's the main focus of this workflow. It's not going to be a super advanced one with all the bells and whistles. It's going to have the core functionality so you can be able to use Superior fast and easy. So let me show you what's going on here. We have a load image down here. So you can take an image, drag and drop it into here. Now we have a woman here that's next to a neon sign that says Sapir. We have an upscale by X factor. So this is how large you want this image to be. I've set this to two right now as a default. So this is gonna make your image two times as large. Up here, we're loading a checkpoint and it's currently loading a lightning XL. So Sapir worked with SDXL, it's actually more of an image to image workflow. So Superior is uh, not really an upscaler. It's more of a kind of a control net. So you can use regular SDX models, but the resource requirements of Superior are uh, quite high. That's why most people are using Lightning Excel models. To find a Lightning Excel model, I recommend going on Civitai. You can use Realist, there's Epic Realism. There's a lot to choose from. I will link this one that I'm using in uh, the comments below. We're using a superior model here as well. I'm currently using the Q1. There are two to choose from, the Q and the F. The easiest way to get them is by going into your manager, install models, search up here, superior, and then take the pruned ones down here, the safe tensors, and just click install. If you only want one, you can do the Q1. That's the general purpose one. You can download both if you want to. It says here also in the notes that the F1 is uh, training with light degradation settings. I found that the Q1 works in most cases and is the easiest one to use. If you download the model but you can't see it here, make sure you press refresh. You can also download it from Hugging Face from this link here and it goes into your Comfy UI models checkpoints folder. You can put it right here. Now, the reason that I don't have it here is because I have it linked to my automatic 1111 mod, uh, models folder. Now, you don't need to worry about these gray ones. Uh, there's a green one here, which is the prompt. So we have a positive prompt. Now it just says high quality detail. And when I have a negative one, it says bad quality, blurry, messy. Now, you don't need to change these, but for some images, it's going to improve. So let's say that for, for this image, for example, we have this woman here 
she's looking at the sign and we can we can generate this it's going to work fine but if you provide stable diffusion with a prompt if you write portrait of a woman for example it's going to improve the image a little bit next up here we have the sampler so we have a seed this is going to be randomized at default if you want to make changes to your settings and see how that affects your image uh, you need to set this to fixed. Now this is going to be a little different to most of the other workflows because I have changed both control scale here and the CFG scale here uh, into inputs instead. Most workflows have these as two different values per, per setting. So the control scale start has a value and the control scale end has a value. I found that for most use cases you don't need a start and, and an end. So I merged these to just have a CFG value and a superior control scale value. Now the CFG value needs to be set specifically for your lightning model and it's usually lower than regular stable diffusion Excel models. In this case it's 1 which is very low. The superior control scale is a value between 0 and 1. Now you can go higher than 1 but uh, I don't really recommend it because it's going to give you a image an overcooked uh, look and the reason i use the same value for start and end uh, again is to uh, simplify the workflow if you are an advanced user feel free to uh, remove this and remake these as uh, separate values but i don't find uh, the need for it now you might ask yourself well what values should i use here uh, i have a default here of 0.9 so that's a very high percentage which is going to retain a lot of the, the original image. Now, I'm going to show you an example later of different kinds of images and how we can work with this value. There's also a sampler here. So we have restore or tiled restore. If you are on a lower end machine, I found that tiled restore, it will you know work faster for you or not faster, but it's going to be less resource intensive. So this is also set as default. You can also change here FP8 unit to true if you are having issues with your VRAM. If you have a fast machine like me, I'm actually on an RTX 4090, you can select high VRAM to true. I'm gonna set this to false for the default workflow, but I'm leaving it on now just because uh, my machine is fast. Now, everything is default here now, and I am just gonna press Q prompt, and let's see what happens. We didn't change the prompt at all. We didn't change any of the settings. We just loaded this image in and uh, we set it to upscale by two, which was default. I have a size reader here. It's not necessary at all. It just reads the size of the image uh, once you uh, generate, which is, I found it could, to be a little convenient. We're going to have an image compare here to the left, which you will be seeing in a second. And then our finished image here in the preview. And here we can see our final image to the right. We're also going to see the image compare here. So if you drag your mouse over, you're going to see before and after. You can see the little text down here, before, after. So it's quite clear. Well, not maybe not in this image, but it adds uh, more detail as it uh, upscale. You can clearly see on the hair here, for example, but also on the noise here in um, the glass. If you look at the previous image, you can see just next to the line here, you can see these little specks of dust or or you know cracks or whatever that is and those get uh actually they're saved in there so that's really cool how it just makes that uh, pop even more so you might not be getting the results i'm getting now so what you can do is um, change your superior control scale now let me quickly show you what this does so let's say for example that i lower this a uh, ton here to 0 0.5 now what happens now is we're gonna lose coherence in the image. So we're probably gonna see a broken image. It's gonna have more creativity to, to work with, but it's gonna resemble the original image much, much less. And as you can see here, it actually changes the image even more. It actually adds a face down here into the, the window, it removes a lot of stuff here. So just generally, not great the arms kind of getting removed too but th it's a way of fine-tuning your image and finding the value that works for your specific image now you might be asking yourself why why i'm not using 0 0.9 for everything 
Well, what if you have an image that looks maybe something uh, like this? So this is the red truck example from um, the repo, and this is not great at all. And if you were to run this with uh, 0.9 here, for example, let's look at this quickly. Now, this isn't looking great at all. I mean, we are getting rid of that noise, but it's just a blurred image. The car is kind of weird. We're getting some, I don't know what this is here. So this isn't working at all. So there are multiple ways to work with this. We can change the superior control scale. We can change the sampler from tile to restore, and we can work with a prompt. Let's first change the sampler here to the restore one. We're not changing the, the value here now. So let's just run this again and see what happens. Remember, this is what we had previously. Now you can see that we are getting something that resembles a car a little bit more, actually a lot more, um, but we are not getting the detail that we want. It's still just looking like a blurred image. It's still restored because all the artifacts in the image you can see up here on the mountains, for example, on the right side of, of the line now, they are removed, but uh, it's still not enough. So you might be saying, well, what if we decrease the control scale, Seb, and give it more freedom to work? Let's look at that. But let's first do something even simpler. Let's just add up in here, red car in mountain, mountains. We're having a fixed seed here now, so we can uh, see how that change changes our image. Let's run this again. So the only change that we're doing now is changing the prompt and we're adding red car in mountains. Let's see how this affects the blurred car that we have here. Not enough of a change. It's uh, the small but very, very small change. So now what can we do? Well, Seb, you said let's look at the value. Okay, let's do that. So let's change the value. Let's put it to 0 0.8 here, for example. So we're lowering this a little bit. That means we're lowering sort of the, the control. So we're going to give it more freedom to work with this image. It will make stable fusion introduce more that was initially not there. So we could change parts of the image. In this case, it is required. And if we look at this example here now, we can see, ooh, it's really starting to take shape. Now, if you look at the mountains, the background, the little stones here, it actually looks pretty good. Now the car isn't perfect. It's still a little wonky at places, but it's much, much clearer than initially and we're kind of retaining the style of the original even you can see like right just left of here this weird angle on on the hood of the car is actually kind of retained from that blur there i wouldn't really look like that in uh, on a car but it's retaining that so if we want a, a more beautiful looking car we can decrease the value even more here so let's do 0.7 for example and let's queue this up we are now getting more and more detail onto our car you can see a little weird thing on the hood there is now gone but that also means that we're losing more stuff on the actual car you can see that the little mark from um, the logo is getting turned into something else so the more we change this value the more we're going to change our image now just for experiment's sake let's actually remove here red car in mountains. Let's see what happens. Because now we found a, a place where, you know, this is an okay-ish restoration. It's not perfect, but we can play with it and, and find a, a place that we're happy with. But from this, I would say it's okay-ish. Now let's queue this up, the same settings, but we just remove the prompt, right? And now it's all a mess again. And this just goes to show how important it is for some images to have that prompt in there. So remember that if you are not getting the images that you want, make sure that you uh, prompt for them. And uh, I would try to get some manual prompting so you actually type what you see instead of some of those automatic taggers that uh, are out there. But this kind of fine tuning is mostly needed for um, images that are badly broken, which is the example of, of this red car here. Now with adding our prompt back in, you can see we're getting uh, back our beautiful looking car here again. Now, again, it's not perfect by any means, but it's okay. Now let's try something different. Let's try this man here. So it's a fairly good looking image already. The details are, you know, they're okay, but it's a smaller image is 1024 by 1024. Let's go into prompt here, elderly man, cinematic 
photo. Let's change to the default 0.9. Let's use the tiled restore again. And uh, let's queue this up and see what we get. We're still doing a two times upscale. Looking at the results here, we can't see much of a difference. The original was fairly high resolution already. So it's just a good upscale of the image that we had. Let's try to push this even further. Let's put this into uh, four times, which is would give us a 4000 by 4000 image. Now this will take significantly longer to so bear that in mind. I'm just gonna skip the video ahead for you guys. You can see here, uh, especially on the before and after text, uh, how big of a change it is on the image. But if you look at the beard here, for example, you can see how clearly defined the, the hairs are, but still retaining, actually, let's look at the hair down here, for example, they're retaining the position of the hairs, uh, which is kind of cool. Starting to introduce some artifacts when I'm zooming in, but still fairly good, I would say. So that's how I've been using Superior. There are lots of ways you can do it. You can change the resampler here, for example. You can also add your own AI upscalers. So you can use ESR gen, stuff like that. Uh, I just found that this is a very simple workflow that I kind of like. So check it out. You can download it from the link in the description. And let me know your favorite workflow for uh, upscaling, res restoration, stuff like that. As always, have a good one. I'll see you in the next video. See ya.